Today, I'll show you how you can connect Claude and Obsidian together to take your thinking to the next level. Watch here as Claude is creating automatic connections between all of my different nodes, which leads to insights that I wouldn't have come up with on my own. With this system, your ideas and research work for you without you having to put in any extra effort at all. So let's see how you can set it up. How do we connect Claude with Obsidian? Well, there's a couple of steps you need to follow, but if you just follow along with me, you'll be there in no time. There's a couple of things you need. First of all, you need Claude for desktop. So you cannot use the web client for this because you need the full desktop application to use MCP servers. It's a very simple install. Next, you need to have Python installed and you need to install UV, which is a package manager for Python, because this is going to be the tool that Claude will call to start up the MCP server whenever Claude desktop starts. Again, no worries if you don't have this, all the links will be in the description. Next, we're gonna be using this MCP Obsidian server by a great open source contributor. I've checked out a couple different variants of these servers and some of them are read only, but this one also allows you to create files, which is very nice and I'll show that later on. So once you've installed the Cloud Desktop app, I would recommend making sure you've got UV installed. The way that you can install that in Mac or Linux is with a simple command. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in my terminal just to make sure I've got it all installed. And there you go, it is. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and clone that MCP Obsidian server. Great, so now if I check out LS, you can see that I've got MCP Obsidian installed right there. If I go into the folder, you will see that there's a couple of files, you know, it indicates it's a Python project, etc. So what else do we need? Well, if we check out the repository instructions, you see that we need to get an Obsidian REST API key, but Obsidian doesn't really have a REST API available by default. However, there's a great community plugin that we can enable in our vault that gives us a REST API. So what we're gonna do is open up Obsidian and I'm going to go ahead and create a new vault. So I'm gonna go and click on file then I'm doing, gonna do open vault and I'm going to create a new vault in the same location where I put the MCP project. But, and I'm gonna put this vault in the same folder as the MCP project. You don't have to do that, but it's just convenient for me to show it off. And I'm just going to call it MCP test for now. Then in terms of folder, I'm going to put it in that folder where I put the MCP server. Again, not necessary, but I just prefer to do that in this case. So I open up the vault and what I can do now is in the settings, I will go to community plugins and turn on community plugins. Then I'm gonna go ahead and browse the community plugins and I'm going to find the REST API plugin right here. And this is the one you need. It's used by a lot of different people and it's quite a great plugin. I'm gonna install it and immediately enable it as well. And then check out the options because in the options we will find the API key. Now. I'm just showing this API key in plain text. It doesn't matter because I only run this locally. You could technically host your MCP server on some kind of cloud service. And then that way, of course, you will need this API key. But in my case, it's just something that's necessary, but yeah, it doesn't really hurt for me to share it because I'm running all of this locally. No other computer can actually access this API server. So it's totally fine. Now I'm gonna go ahead and copy this API key. And we need to place it somewhere, right? But where do we actually place it? Well, I'm gonna go and reopen that terminal of mine because I'm going to put it in a .n file in that folder that we cloned. So I'm just gonna use nano to create a new file. You can also just do this in VS Code or text editor, it's totally fine. And then you wanna call this Obsidian API key. Now I'm getting that from the repository instructions. You see here that you can create a .n file and you need to use this Obsidian API key value and then paste your API key in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do exactly that. I paste it in the API key, and now we can simply save this file. And now if I do ls again, you will see that we've got this .n file, which will be referred to every time the server starts up. Now then, how do we actually make sure that Claude can access this MCP server? Well, we have to change the MCP server config for that. And there's a couple of different options out there, but I'm going to follow this one here. There's a development server configuration, which I think is a great one if you're just starting out. And you can see here that UV is being used by Claude to start up the server. So one thing I do need to know is the directory where I put this folder in. So I'm gonna go ahead and check that out. So I'm gonna CD out of that specific folder and then just check out what my current working directory is. And then that's great. I'm going to refer to that as well. But where do we actually put this JSON configuration? Well, for that, let's open Claude 
and have a look at where the MCP config actually is. So once you open Claude, what you can do is you can go into the Claude settings and then check out developer and click on edit config. And then you'll eventually just land in the location where your config JSON is defined. So I'm gonna go and open this one with just a simple text editor. And you'll be able to see that it's just a plain file at the moment, there's not much in here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this definition from that repository and paste it in here. Just gonna move some things around here because I do of course want to change that directory to actually refer to the directory where I've got on this MCP server installed. So again, I have printed out the directory in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste that and replace the value here with that. Now that should be all you need to do to get it to work. But in my experience, I have had trouble with Claude finding this UV command. So what I do recommend you to do is check where exactly UV was installed by typing a command like which UV. And in my case, I'm actually just going to copy this direct path where UV is installed. Whether you have to do this or not depends on your configuration, your machine, but I found this to be much more reliable. So I'm going to save it like this. So it's going to call UV with this directory command and it will run the MCP Obsidian server. The nice thing about UV is that it will automatically install and keep dependencies uh, installed for you and you don't have to just do it manually. It will just do it the first time that this command runs. So this is all that you should need to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and quit that config and I'm just going to also quit Claude and restart Claude desktop here. Now Claude is pretty silent. It doesn't really tell you much about whether or not the MCP server is installed or not. However, you can actually see that I've now got this kind of tool icon with an eight available because I've got eight MCP tools available to me now. So I can do things like appending content to a new or existing file in a vault. I could do a complex search, get file contents. It's really cool. But I'm just gonna go ahead and show you how this actually works. So let's go and open our Obsidian vault right next to Claude to see how Claude can investigate and update the vault as we go. Cool, so you can see that I've got an empty vault and just to test, I can ask it to create a new file with random facts in Obsidian. So this is just a nice random test to see if it even works in the first place. And now you can see that it's going to run that tool from MCP Obsidian. And you can see that it passes parameters like the file path, the content, and now I have to give permission for it to use that tool. I'm just gonna allow it for this chat because it's convenient to just be able to, you know, not have to click that button every single time, right? And now you can indeed see that there's this random facts markdown file, really cool stuff. Now, of course, Claude is pretty smart. So when you wanted to actually consistently create things like connections in your graph view, it can also do that. It all just depends on how well you define what Claude is supposed to be doing for you. So in my case, I'm curious to see if it can actually rework this file and maybe create a couple of connections and then create a couple of other files to prove that it can understand how to create connections independently. So let's go ahead and ask something like that, right? I want you to prove you can create meaningful connections to fill up my graph view in Obsidian. Edit the file to add a bunch of connections and add a few more files to cross-reference. Let's see how it picks up on this task. So first, it's going to edit that file. Sure, go ahead. And then you can already see, boom, we're getting interesting things in our graph view. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight that a little bit because I know it's quite small. Let's go ahead and zoom in. So you can indeed see, whoa, okay, it's going quite quickly. You can see it's starting to add animal facts, plant facts, and the random facts. And the random facts, whoa, okay, I can barely keep up. <laughs> it's connected to a couple of different elements. So, oh, goodness, maybe we should give this a, a second to process because it just keeps adding new and new information. Um, yeah, you can see that on the left, it's just creating new and new files. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and just stop it from generating because I'm happy with this, but it's going a bit too crazy. I just want to show how it works. 
So you can see here, for example, that random facts is connected to our history facts, and that is connected to historical oddities. So you can really see that Claude understands the point of Obsidian and how to create these different connections. So I can, for example, click on historical oddities and get into this new file that it created. Now, the nice thing about this is that it means that you can just give it a dump of whatever notes you want to take, and then it will create the connections for you and keep them up to date if you might be missing connections. And I find this to be amazing because while I like the idea behind Obsidian and creating these connections, I find that I myself often forget to create them when I need to. So it's really nice to have a system that could create them for you proactively or just review your entire vault for you to see if you miss any connections. Really cool stuff. So I'm going to give you some pro tips here that you should really follow to get the most out of this plugin. Because while I showed you some random examples, you want to make this work for your use case. Right? So I recommend you to create a separate cloud project and call it something like Obsidian Note Taker. Now, the great thing about having a separate project is that you can make Claude much more proactive and always using this Obsidian MCP tool. So for example, I can set project instructions and say, use the Obsidian MCP tool as much as possible to help me out. The great thing is with something like this is that you can also immediately create a structured vault. For example, let's say that you want to use the para method to keep track of your life's projects and to organize your work. Well, I can, for example, ask Claude to fill up my vault with example folder file structures so I can follow the para method. And if I do this, you will see how easy it is to actually set up that initial fault. So I'm just going to allow it to use MCP Obsidian for this entire chat. And on the right here, I actually cleared out that uh, fault that we created previously, just so we have a clean start again. And once we get started here, you can actually see that it creates a project folder, an areas folder, and all of them have different readme files, which is great. We're starting to get the resources folder now as well. And then we are missing one. We should be getting something else here. Yep, here we go. So we also have the archive folder, which is great. So even if you're not familiar with the para method, you can ask Claude what it means and how much your current fault complies with the para method. And then you see that it already proactively fills it with just a couple of examples, like the annual tax filling project here or the health area with fitness tracking and medical information. Now, of course, this is all just examples, but you can see how powerful this is and how you can apply it to your workflow and whatever way you use Obsidian. Now, if you thought this video was useful, you should really check out the community in the description below where I teach you how you can become an AI native engineer using tools like this to make yourself more productive and work together with AI models to create your future. I'll see you there.